And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Sunday, August 11th. And if you'd like additional weather information on top of what I give you in this YouTube video, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. It'll bring you to a map of the continental U.S. with Hawaii and Alaska to the lower left and tabs for the territories. And a quick check of the map this Sunday afternoon. We have flood watches still along the coastal Carolinas as the result of remnant moisture, thunderstorms producing torrential downpours and the potential for flash flooding. Heat advisories, the south tip of Florida along the Red River Valley of Texas, severe thunderstorm watch, Nebraska, northeast Colorado, northwest Kansas. Flood watches, western Colorado, southern Utah, especially in the canyons there where thunderstorms could produce torrential downpours that result in flash flooding. And then we have air quality, uh, alerts as well as uh, areas of red flag warnings for uh, critical fire weather conditions that include dry thunderstorms and or uh, just windy conditions with hot temperatures and very low humidities. Here in Alaska, we still have flood warnings in effect uh, for the uh, Squentna and the Yetna rivers there within the Susitna uh, Valley. These uh, rivers are experiencing some moderate flooding, including uh, Lake Creek. This area picked up uh, quite a bit of rain midweek, some heavy rainfall then, and then the additional inch or two of rain that fell here this weekend is keeping river levels at moderate flood stage, and we expect that through Wednesday morning. But the good news is drier and warmer weather will return to the southern, central, and eastern mainland uh, for midweek. In fact, Wednesday is looking to be an excellent day with more in the way of sunshine and warmer temperatures. But overall, there's going to remain this progressive pattern of Bering Sea and North Pacific lows that just every other day or two work their way up across and impact areas of the state. This will allow for cool and occasionally wet weather to continue across the West Coast and Western mainland beyond mid-August. So this is gonna be a persistent pattern. Quick check of a few of the FAA webcams up to the north, uh, the Brooks Range, Central Brooks Range, uh, Chandler Shelf right there below Attigan Pass, 43 degrees. Up at Attigan Pass, it's 36, and uh, they've had some termination snow up there and a little bit of uh, light accumulation. Uh, New Talk on the uh, west, southwest coast is mostly cloudy, 48, but another disturbance coming in should bring some more rain showers tonight into Monday morning, and those will continue eastward and eventually overspread Alaska Range and south central areas tomorrow afternoon. And a quick check of Isabel Pass. Uh, still some windy uh, conditions toward Black Rapids and uh, Delta Junction, but 46 degrees and rainy there. And uh, Yakutat reporting just steady rain and low clouds associated with the frontal system uh, that continues to work its way eastward in 55 degrees. And here are the uh, various watch warnings advisories that remain in effect. We still have the flood watch into this Sunday evening for the Susitna Valley. And as I mentioned, uh, the Squentna and Yetna rivers still have flood warnings that will continue into Wednesday morning due to the moderate flooding that's occurring there. It's impacting lodges, cabins, other structures along the river. And then we've had um, just a special weather statement for the potential for uh, some light snow uh, today and tonight across uh, the central Brooks Range around Anatovic and Attigan Passes. And then higher water levels on the Tanana River should remain below minor flood stage, but certainly higher water levels from some of the rainfall that has occurred in the past and then more recently. And checking again, as I said, flood warnings continue along uh, Lake Creek, uh, Squentna and Yentna Rivers through Wednesday morning. This photo was taken a couple days ago, but it is impacting a number of the cabins, fishing lodges, places there that are right along the river. Good news for fire danger, notice the state here, low or no fire danger due to the, just all of the rain and cooler temperatures, and this is the forecast for Monday, so we're, we're sitting well there. And uh, I wanted to mention a few things going on in the sky. Tonight, Percy and Meteor Shower peaks. This is not something you can see from Alaska in August because it's still just not enough darkness, but going down through uh, Southern Canada, the lower, 48, certainly a big event uh, to catch the Perseid meteor shower, kind of one of those uh, 
annual sky uh, watching rituals of the later summer. First quarter moon happens August 12th, that's tomorrow. Noctilucent clouds, the world's highest clouds up there above 50 miles caused by uh, meteor dust inter interacting with uh, water vapor from rocket launches and volcanic eruptions. That season is about to end. It typically is a very limited viewing between mid-July and mid-August in Alaska. But the Alaska Aurora viewing season is going to start up soon as the length of night grows longer and the daylight grows shorter. And that usually uh, kick in about another week or so, especially here the latter portion of the month. And certainly once we get into September and we do expect solar activity or the sun to remain more active here as we go into this upcoming fall. So certainly keep your eyes peeled on the sky whenever we have clear conditions uh, coming up here going into the fall season. So looking at the satellite imagery, we have had one system come on in, some of that energy lifting northeastward. Here comes a secondary wave that's going to quickly move across the southwest uh, portion of the mainland, coastal areas, and then the interior. That will race eastward across south central, especially south of the Alaska range on Monday into Monday evening. And then uh, another front up here uh, we'll be pushing eastward and bringing a little cooler conditions along areas of the Chukchi Sea as we go through the early midweek. So here's the low that brought the heavier rainfall uh, to the southwest and south central early in the weekend. We had gusty winds in the vicinity of uh, Anchorage, especially East Anchorage Hills around Turnigan Arm did have a high wind warning for a time uh, Saturday evening, early Sunday morning. That has since expired. The front continues eastward. It's bringing some rain and rain showers to the northern and central panhandle, though the amounts of rain are not going to be as significant as when the system first came on in here through southern parts of the mainland. And we have Here's the first leading front, secondary disturbance down here, another cold front back up into eastern Russia. And as we go into late tonight, we still have weak low pressure lingering over the north central Gulf. The really warm temperatures now are in central Canada, so the entire state has cooled down. This will bring just a little reinforcing shot of the cooler air. This cold front will kind of wash out late tonight into Monday. And as that system works eastward, it'll still keep some areas of rain and rain showers going from the west and north side of the Alaska Range to areas south of the Alaska Range and along the Gulf Coast Monday afternoon. And then there's another front up here in eastern Russia that will, the northern portion of that front will tend to move eastward while the southern portion tends to stall out. But a ridge of high pressure will bring some improving weather to the Alaska Peninsula up through the southwest into south central starting Tuesday afternoon evening. And really, it'll be notable come Wednesday. Wednesday will be one of the better weather days here for southern areas of the state. Central eastern mainland will enjoy more in the way of sunshine. Warmer temperatures getting into the 60s to around 70 degrees. So really uh, get out, enjoy that, allow to dry out things. And then uh, we'll keep an eye on couple of lows out here toward the bearing because as I said it's a progressive pattern get a couple of days and maybe a little nicer weather there's a system that could come in and bring some more rain across areas of the western Gulf uh, Kenai Peninsula uh, Cook Inlet by the time we get into next weekend on Saturday so the upcoming week looking fairly dry south central areas for the panhandle the showers will overspread the area tonight though not as heavy as the rains that came in through the east side of the Kenai Peninsula uh, and Prince William Sound last night and early on, uh, yeah, last night and early this Sunday morning. And, and so lows in the 50s, we're going to see 40s though, uh, 43 at Talkeetna and uh, Glen Allen. And then Monday afternoon, high temperatures around 60 in Anchorage. Uh, back here through the Panhandle, still some mid-60s, 65-ish or so for Ketchikan and Klawak and uh, morning lows Tuesday morning back down in the lower 40s again across areas of the Copper River Basin, Talkeetna. Lows low and mid 50s here, southern and outer panhandle. And then temperatures Tuesday afternoon with maybe some breaks developing in the cloud cover getting back up around or a bit above 60, back up in low, maybe mid 60s. Same thing, 60s, maybe even some upper 60s here again around Metlakatla. And then for north central areas of the state, uh, lows generally in the 40s, though 30, upper 30s there, Utgadvik, Wainwright. And then temperatures remain not, nothing like what they were a week ago. You're not going to see 89 again in uh, Dead Horse anytime soon. And uh, looking at temperatures, highs may get up into the uh, 60s in the Yukon Flats and along the Elkan border, 
Otherwise, 50 is fairly common. Again, nighttime lows generally above 40 most areas, except for maybe along the, the Brooks Range, parts of the North Slope and Arctic Coast. And temperatures Tuesday afternoon ranging from low mid 60s Fairbanks, Yukon Flats over toward uh, Eagle and Northway. And as we go westward, uh, the Seward Peninsula, uh, Nome 50, as will uh, Savunga on St. Lawrence Island. Areas of the southwest interior and along the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians in the 40s, mid upper 40s for lows. Highs generally below 60 in the 50s for Monday afternoon. Again, lows back down into the 40s for Tuesday morning throughout the region. And then daytime highs, if we can get a little bit of sun, uh, start to get back up around or just a crack above 60 here along and just west of the Alaska range for Tuesday afternoon. And here again is the same old, same old, the six to, day, six to 10 day temperature outlook. This has been a very prevalent pattern for a long time overall when we look back toward the late winter, spring, summer. Temperatures are expected to average below normal centered on the west and southwest portion of the mainland August 17th through the 21st. Maybe a little above normal here along the Elkan border up in the northeast toward Kaktovik and extending down into uh, the panhandle. Precipitation wise, uh, we're expecting near to a little below normal precipitation over the panhandle. Doesn't mean it won't rain there, just means it'll be a little below normal. Better chance of above normal precipitation along and northwest of the Alaska Range, including areas of the Middle Yukon Valley through the Western Brooks Range and along the northwest Arctic coast between uh, Point Hope and Utkiadvik there again, August 17th through the 21st.